another episode of the Autumn Windbags. RJ Clifford, Juan Soto. Let's have some fun today. A very special, very special. unique episode yes. of the Autumn Windbags. Uh, I've never been done before. Um, we wanted to give a thank you. Unprecedented, if you unprecedented. will. We're crossing new boundaries here. All right. We're on the Oregon Trail, and none of us died of dysentery yet. Uh, traversing new ground. So we uh, we just got 5,000 subscribers on YouTube last week. Thank you so much thank you, thank to all of you, you guys. You this is a thank you to you thank for joining you. us on this journey. We appreciate you being here. Otherwise, it's just me and Soto talking to each other. No one listening. And also, uh, it's the holidays, right? It's in between Christmas and New Year. We're recording this December 26th. Uh, I'm going to be traveling this week. Soto's spending time with family and all that good stuff. So uh, we figured we'd bang out a very special episode of the Autumn Wind Bag. So thank you to you and kind of a holiday thing. Uh, you guys asked for it. We said, what, what do you guys want us to do for 5,000 subscribers? And this was the overwhelming response. Um, Soto Shock, recommended, Shockingly. <laughs> right? You guys are gluttons for punishment. Oh, That's taking boy. a cat o' nine tails to your backs. Soto mentioned, hey, let's go through every single draft pick and big free agent signing of the second John Gruden era, the Gruden Mayock era. Oof. John Gruden signed. Back to the Raiders again for the second stint, January of 2018, and went on to have, speaking of unprecedented, an unprecedented run of terrible GMing. Oh, God. So we're going to go through every single draft pick that John Gruden made and the top 10 biggest. We're not going to go through every single signing, right? Like picking up random guards off of IR and you know practice squads, but the top 10 biggest free signings of the Gruden Mayock era. And let me tell you, boys. Fucking depressing. Not pretty. <laughs> <laughs> it hurt. This is homework that, you know, like, when, I don't know, in college or in high school, you're like the class that you just hate, like European literature or econ or something. You got this major report and a topic you hate, and it just, it just hurts you to do it. That's what this reminded me of. Just going through like, oh, we signed Trent Brown for how much? Oh, LaMarcus Joyner didn't do shit even before. Oh, Carl Nassib, like he basically played the same he always did, but he was paid like he was a pro bowler. Like, oh, I remember now. Oh, God, it's, to Great. it's, it's tough. And uh, I mean, as far as as far as the draft stuff goes, what I what I did was I I looked so Soto at, did the draft. Yeah, I did the draft. Soto did the, the four drafts, the 2018, 2019, uh, 2020, 2021. And uh, I did the top 10 free agent signs. So Soto, you go first. Let's do the drafts. All right. So here's. Here's how we here's how we did this. We got the draft pick, the round the number. Then I I took a look at notable players that were chosen from that pick to the next Raiders pick. Yep. Um, I mean, there's there's going to be players up and down, uh, but I just selected the ones a few, like maybe two or three for each player. That if we would have gotten half of these guys on our team, it would look a lot different. Uh, so of course, drafting is not like oh well, you know anyone can you know make mistakes drafting. But take a look at a theme of where these players are now that we drafted, and a, a lot of the players that were available, a lot of sometimes from the same position. Mm -hmm. That's tough. Okay, so and, and these were loaded drafts too. Like Gruden had it's not Gruden took over like the Rams drafts or the Broncos where they have like no first rounders, no right. Like even 2018, we had two third rounders, two fifth rounders, on top of a full complement. Like yeah. he wasn't drafting with bare cupboards. Like he was draft, he was shooting with a loaded gun. Yeah, we had we had definitely ammunition to build the team, but you didn't pick the right guy. So here we go, and we're gonna start two thousand, the year of our Lord, two thousand eighteen. First round, number fifteen pick. The pick was offensive tackle Colton Miller. He's a starting left tackle. He's an average to maybe slightly above average left tackle. Uh, any notable awards? None. No Pro Bowl, no All-Pros, none of that. Uh, players who were available at the time. Uh, the next pick, Tremaine Edmonds, the leading tackler on one of the best defenses in the league for the Bills for the last five years. Uh, he's pretty damn good. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, it really hurt. This is the guy I wanted. Derwin fucking James was there. He was right there. Yeah. And uh, he's probably one of the best players on the uh, on the on the on the Chargers. Uh Jair Alexander, we saw him ball out with two two picks yesterday for the for the Packers at corner. And of course, Lamar Jackson was the 32nd pick. 
uh, at quarterback in the first round that year. That's the first pick in 2018. Moving right along, uh, in round two, in the pick number 57, we picked P.J. Hall, defensive tackle. Uh, P.J. Hall did not receive any awards, no Pro Bowls, no All-Pros, but he is currently in the XFL on the Seattle Sea Dragons. There you go. So he's still playing pro ball. A second uh, rounder. A second rounder. Second round pick, man. So Already, already there. Yeah. Already dreaming. Uh, already, already like, wow, what are we fucking doing? Yeah. Okay. So let's before we go any further, first rounders are supposed to be starters for years to come. Second rounders are supposed to be starters, if not the first year, within the next first couple of years. Third rounders are supposed to be starters and developmental guys. Once you get to the fourth round, those are guys that you develop to become starters later on down the line. When you miss on these guys, especially in the first couple of rounds, it's like, oh man, well, at least this guy's still, you know, like a Cleveland Farrell. He's on the team, he plays rotational, rotational snaps. player. And he and plays special teams. Could you, dude, a lot of these players aren't even on our team anymore. Or even in the league. The NFL. So, the second round is, pick isn't in the NFL Second anymore. round pick. So here's who was available. James Washington at wide receiver. DJ Chark at wide receiver. And Brian O'Neill at offensive tackle. These are all starting players in the NFL. And players who have contributed to their teams and have won awards. Uh, Brian O'Neill was uh, a pro bowler at offensive tackle. Available. All right. Moving along to the third round. Number Pick number 65, Brandon fucking Paca. Offensive tackle. He is currently on the roster. He's a backup tackle, and he's on IR. He hasn't played this year. Uh, no all pros, no pro bowls for Mr. Parker. This one hurts. Because who was available five picks later? But Fred Warner, probably one of the top one or two linebackers in the whole NFL was just sitting there. Also, Michael Gallup was sitting there at wide receiver. This one really kills my heart. His next two guys. At pick 83, Orlando Brown, the starting left tackle, all pro uh, pro bowler for the Chiefs. Mm -hmm. And before that with the Ravens, was available to be selected. Uh, sweet same name, too. Sa yeah, Orlando same position. And don't worry. We'd sign a Brown to that position later. We'll yeah, don't that. worry about that. <laughs> Uh, and three picks after that, number 86, Mark Andrews, the all-world tight end for the Ravens. Okay. Yeah, pa Parker's Parker's like, he was supposed to be the starter this year. That's how bad this line was on paper to start. Was Brandon Parker's like, oh, man, we don't have Brandon Parker? Wow, we're really hurt. We're really screwed at right tackle. You're like, yeah, wait, right. what? You're banking on that? Just take Brandon, take Brandon right. Parker name out of there. Let's speed, let's speed this up. All right. Third round pick. Third round pick, number 87. Second, second third rounder. Our, our second third round pick was Arden Key at defensive end. He is currently on the Jacksonville Jaguars. He's he's contributing. He's got more sacks than uh, than your boy Chandler Jones does. Mm -hmm. uh, no pro bowlers, no all pros. Who was available but Joseph Noteboom, the starting left tackle for the Los uh, Angeles Rams. Alex Kappa, the starting guard for the, uh, the uh, Bucks, mm -hmm. And Tavarius Moore... Starting safety, I think he's still wait, he's still with uh, no, he's with uh, the 49ers now, right? He was with mm -hmm. the Chiefs. So starting players, these are all starting players. Now again, am I saying we should have gotten each one of these guys? No, but I mean, we got one starter out of four picks so far in this year. Mm, pretty rough. So let's move along. Fourth rounder, Nick Nelson. Who? He's a yep. free agent. No one knows who he is because he doesn't play in the NFL anymore. Uh, Brian Allen again for the Rams, starting center. Uh, Kaiser White, starting linebacker for many years in the NFL. Teron Johnson, the quarterback starter, same position. Josh Sweat, defensive end, probably the best player on the defense right now for the Washington Commanders. And another tight end, Dalton Schultz, the starting tight end for the Dallas Cowboys. Mm -hmm. Oof. A lot of talent available in the fourth That's round. That's five guys. picks in four rounds. One, One guy is still you know, was on the team this year. Uh, okay, next pick was... Maurice Hurst. Maurice Hurst is a rotational backup player for the 49ers. Doesn't play too often. Uh, no Pro Bowlers, no All Pro selections. But who was available? DJ Reed, quarterback, was available. Uh, Bilal Nichols is on our team now. Mm -hmm. Available. Trey Flowers, 
started safety in the NFL, Wyatt Teller, Pro Bowl guard. Those guys are all available in the fifth round. Mm. Uh, and we didn't get either one of them. We got Maurice Hurst, who we cut as b- before last year and signed along with Arden Key last year, signed with the 49ers. Okay, here we go. Fifth round, number 173, Johnny Townsend, punter. Played for us for a year, I believe. Uh, here's who was available. The next pick at 174, Marquez Valdez Scantling. Contributor at wide receiver. Good wide receiver. Yeah. Good wide receiver. Russell Gage. For a damn good wide receiver, drafted by Atlanta now with the Bucks. Uh Sebastian Joseph Day wrecked our freaking game plan. Uh, you know, against the Rams. Mm-hmm. Defensive tackle. Cedric Wilson for a damn good wide receiver. Uh, and Braxton Berrios, return man wide receiver for the Jets. I believe at the time he was with the Pats when he was yep. drafted at number 210. Okay. Uh Azim Victor, round six. Who? Exactly. He's a free agent. Probably sells insurance. Hopefully he's doing well. Uh, And after that, number 228, our seventh round pick was Marcel Aitman at wide receiver. This is going to be tough because five picks later, a little known singer, rugby player by the Philadelphia Eagles, Jordan Mailata, their starting left tackle, all pro, pro bowler. Uh, Yeah. Seventh round steal. Seventh round steal, but Marcel Aitman is still playing ball. He's with the XFL St. Louis Blackhawks. So that's 2018 draft picks. There were nine of them. We had nine, one through seven, two third rounders, and a fifth rounder. We have Colton Miller, PJ Hall, Brandon Parker, Arden Key, Nick Nelson, Maurice Hurst, Johnny Townsend, Azeem Victor, Marcel Aitman. Currently, two of those players are still on the Raiders. One of them was on IR last year. Who knows what's going to happen? And then the first of the first rounder, we we hit. A start. We got a starting yeah, left over. tackle that we signed and we liked and we're keeping it. Outside of that, most of these Bup- guys not Bupkis. in the NFL anymore. <laughs> Bupkis. That's 2018. All right, 2019. Here we 2019. go. 2019. All right, Gruden's all right. Maybe it was just one bad <laughs> draft, right? He just has he hasn't drafted in a while. He's been out of the NFL doing TV stuff for 10 years. Maybe he was just finding his stroke. Surely, surely in 2019, Soto, Gruden's going to do great because we're going to have not one, not two, but three first-round picks. After trading away Amari Cooper and Khalil Mack. And also not one, not two, but three fourth round picks. So there'll be a total of nine picks. Seven picks in the first four rounds. Clearly, Soto, with this kind of ammunition, John Gruden, through his wisdom, is going to draft an all-star class that's going to carry this team into 2020 and beyond. Right? I mean, I'll tell you this. It was his best draft by far. Yep. Uh, Here we go. First round pick, number four overall. Your boy, my boy, everyone's boy, Cleveland fucking Farrell. Remember the, like, universal gas shock in that broadcast? Whoa! That's all I remember hearing. Whoa! It was bad. It was bad. I was watching um, NFL Network. Because NFL Network doesn't have a really good like replay of it, but ESPN does. So I'll watch live with NFL Network, but then I'll re- watch the replay with on ESPN because I can watch them both basically. And I remember uh, Rich Eisen, whoa, because it was like, what are they going to do? Like, and they fucking did it. Guaranteed that truck. They're like going like there's a tape room in every production truck, and they're like, oh shit, let's go to page twelve. Like we were not ready for this. They're like, what? Yeah, I I'll get this out there. You did Farrell. not have Cleveland Farrell shit ready in fourth no, pick. No Pro Bowls. No all pros. He is currently a backup player, special teams player on our team at number four pick overall. Who was available? A lot of people were available. A lot of good players. but Everyone but four players. <laughs> yeah, right? So let's take a look. Um, Devin White, the next very next pick at number five. That's All world want. linebacker. That That's the guy. That was the guy right there. Imagine having Devin White and... Tremaine Evans as your linebacking core? Yeah. Dude. Okay. Josh Allen, uh, captain sack leader for the Jaguars, was available. Brian Burns, the all-world freaking defensive end for the Panthers, was available at number 16. And at number 19, Jeffrey Simmons, all-world defensive tackle. He was available as well. All right. We have pick number 24. 
Josh Jacobs, the first Pro Bowl selected by the Gruden Mayock era. He's our starting running back. He leads the NFL in rushing this year. Pro Bowler in, in uh, after the 2021 season, right? Mm. Uh, or the 2020, 2020. season, excuse me. 2020. And going to be a Pro Bowler this year. I believe. Wasn't he? No, he, yeah, he was a Pro Bowler this year. Oh, yeah. Alternate, right? Not all pro. Chubb. Not all the, pro. Got, got the first one. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, good pick. Can't really argue with that. No, no one really, uh, you know, available. You're gonna draft or, a running back in round one. At least you got Josh Jacobs. You got, you, you got a guy who started who's leading the league in rushing. Okay, next pick, number twenty-seven, Jonathan Abram, safety. Uh, Jonathan Abram was waived earlier this season. Got picked up by Green Bay in a few days, and he was waived by Green Bay. And after a few days, he was picked up by Seattle. Who I don't know if you know if he's on the active roster right now. But he's on Seattle. He's in the NFL, not really doing much of anything. Didn't play a snap for Green Bay. All right. Who was available when Jonathan Abram was selected? Brock Yassin, who is our starting cornerback. Debo Samuel, probably the most uh, electrifying weapon that the 49ers have on their team. Greg Little, starting offensive tackle. Couldn't hurt. Sean Murphy Bunting, starting corner in this league. Plays a lot of good ball. Uh, yeah. So, that was uh, Jonathan Abram. Next three up, first rounders. Three first rounders, and we hit on one, and we have like a, a guy that's a rotational guy, and a guy that's not in the league. And none of them we picked didn't did not pick up the fifth year option of any of the three. Any of them. Any of them. All right. Round two, pick number forty, Trayvon Mullen, who did not guy. go to any another clubs a guy, no Pro Bowls, no All Pros. Was traded uh, before the season uh, to uh, for a conditional pick. I think it was a conditional fifth. It ended up being a seventh because he was also waived by the Cardinals. He's currently a free agent. Uh, who was available? Same position. Uh, six picks later, Greedy Williams. Probably the, the best uh, corner was for the for the uh, for the uh, Browns. Right. Uh, this is going to hurt. These next couple are going to hurt. Number fifty-one, AJ Brown. Number round, number like. number sixty four DK Metcalf. <laughs> number sixty six Deontay Johnson. Uh, and That's number seventy six Terry McLaurin. These are like four That's Pro nasty. Bowl, if not All Pro, wide receivers in the NFL that were all available to us. But we went with Trayvon Mullen because he played for a good program and he was a captain. All righty, moving along. I had hopes for Mullen. That one, that one at the time, that was a pick. I was like, not a bad pick. Yeah, man. It Unlike the other how it turned out. Yeah. The other three were just like, mm -hmm. okay, here we go. The crown jewel of any draft class for uh, the Gruden Mayock era. Round four, pick number 106, Max Crosby, pro bowler, all pro this year, second team, starting defensive end, the starting defensive end. Great pickup. Not much you can say about that. Pound for pound, best player on the Raiders. Best draft pick they had. Best draft pick. Uh, you said it was Colton Miller. No, it's Max Crosby. Max Crosby. Yeah, random Eastern Michigan dude who just, like, out-hustled and outworked everybody. He's the rare, like, Gruden grinder mentality where it worked, right? Like, when he, like the thing he's – when when you say that's what Gruden's looking for, Max Crosby's what he thinks he's looking – he thinks he's going to find when he looks for type of guys like that, right? Just football loving motors that, uh, that are just like Gruden grinders, right? Like that's, if, if Gruden actually hits, this is what it looks like. Something like this. I think part of that was because Max Crosby was miss, uh, miss, miss, uh, I want to say diagnosed, but what's the word when you're, when you're scouted, he was miss scouted. Mm -hmm. Uh, he was scouted as a high motor end guy. Like that was all he was, but no, He's shown that he's super athletic, he's quick, he's smart, and he's tough. His first preseason game with us, he broke his hand, and he played the entire game. He's like, oh, just wrap it up. It's not going to get more broken, trying to right? Punch, trying to punch a fumble out, right? He's gotten real yeah. good at that, right? He's gotten yeah. real good at punching fumbles out. And he was he doing broke that a bone in his hand, and they just, they just taped a plate over the top of his hand. He played the whole season that way. Uh, all right. Also, too, we also got to give credit where credit's due, where when he came in, obviously, with alcoholism, 
and yeah, yeah. through the Raiders, the Raiders program, I'm, I'm, they shouldn't take all the credit, but some of the credit for Max Crosby getting right belongs to the Raiders family for the type of support. Oh, yeah, Obviously sure. his beautiful baby mama, his him, himself, a lot of people deserve credit, but the Raiders organization deserve a, a little piece in helping Max. That locker room did help Max get right. So amazing draft pick by Gruden and fantastic kind of ecosystem to help get him right. Like for sure. It's been, uh, we have to spend a little extra seconds on Max Crosby because <laughs> we're yeah, gonna, we'll move you know, on to the other stuff. Because we got Isaiah Johnson coming up at 129. Darn. Uh, the next pick was Drew Trank- Tranquil, another linebacker. Uh, Isaiah Johnson is not in the NFL. Uh, he's a free agent currently. Uh, needless to say, no no all pros, no Pro Bowls for Mr. Johnson. Our next pick was in round four as well, number 137, Foster Moreau, who is our – or Moreau, who is our backup tight end. And, you know, kind of streaky up and down, iffy blocker, iffy hands, you know. He's uh, he, he can produce when he gets the ball in his hands, but, you know, he's a backup for a reason. Um, Not bad for, for a fourth rounder? Fine. For, for, for a fourth, fourth rounder, again, like, okay. fourth okay. and beyond are their developmental okay. guys who are, who are special teamers who develop. And it's, a, it's a thumbs up, right? It's a thumbs up. <laughs> like, pick. hey, not bad. Not bad, right? All right. Moving along, a very good pick in round five, number 149, Hunter Renfro, wide receiver. Made a Pro Bowl. Uh, I mean, under dubious circumstances, but he made a Pro Bowl. He's a Pro Bowler. Uh, he's, a, he's, I mean, I put him here starting wide receiver. I think Hollins is the most starting starter now, but he's a slot receiver for us and has gets, gets a lot of uh, a lot of snaps, a, a, a important piece of our offense. Uh, the next pick in round seven was well, Quentin again, Bell. Let's, 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 let's spend some. Let's enjoy Hunter Renfro. Let's Come enjoy on, Hunter. Fifth rounder, let's enjoy Pro Hunter Bowler, wide receiver. Let's enjoy. This was all. This was the one where I was like. What the hell? You're like, okay, he's just randomly picking white dudes from Clemson at this point. Like, right? He doesn't like why. Who's what? the best Clemson player left? It's like, who's like, why are you picking this? And this dude like never had a hundred yard receiving year. Like, he had he played great against Alabama to win when they won the national title. He had that that winning touchdown against Bama on the on the goal line with like a three yard like a standard operating procedure Hunter Renfro route, right? Just like faked in, ran jab out, in, jab, go out, it, you know, came yeah. down, got it right. And you're just like, all right, you're just pick, picking Clemson, dude. But again, this is another like Gruden grinder gone right, right? Mm-hmm. Good program, hard again, worker. miscouted. He's smart, fast, smart guy. He's faster yeah. than people think. He's, he's quicker wiggle. than people think. Uh, smarter than people think. So he's um, definitely a player that was groomed and developed. But the thing is, it's the same type of player. You know, we, we don't, we're not getting these high end guys who are more athletic better players uh at, and, and developing those guys we're developing these diamonds in the rough type of thing but you gotta be able to do both uh round seven pick number 230 quentin bell was available uh, was our pick uh he's no longer in the nfl and jackson barton who was a backup offensive tackle was available could have got him and had him play but did it uh notable undrafted free agents alec ingold who is with the Dolphins currently was our fullback for a few years. AJ Cole, who was a pro, who is a Pro Bowler last year, so he's our starting punter. Great work, uh, undrafted free agents uh, class, and the last undrafted free agent who is also our starting center, Andre James. So this is probably the most successful draft and post draft undrafted free agent list that we have. Uh, 2019, we have 20, one 2019. Two, as a draft class, like obviously get shit on because of the, the first rounders, right? With with Farrell and Abram. Yeah, yeah. But like you mentioned, um and Mullen, I mean Mullen we've got, really good. we got three pro bowlers out of it. Four. Jacobs, Max, Hunter, Hunter, and Cole. Yeah, yeah. So, so three out of the draft class. Okay. The and then the, and then two really good undrafted free agents we picked out of that. Out of, so yeah, so three out of the draft class, another one undrafted. Two starters out of the undrafted class, and Mullen was a starter briefly. Farrell was a starter briefly. Uh, Morrow, solid backup. So again, 2019 looks terrible because it's top heavy and shitty. But getting one of the best defensive player in football in round four, getting a Pro Bowl slot receiver in round five, getting a, a Pro Bowler and undrafted. In hindsight. A lot of things went right. The first things went wrong. Yeah. A lot of other things went right. 
for sure. All right, that's 2019. 2019. Let's move on to 2020, baby. This is where it gets ugly. This is where it gets really ugly. Yeah, man. This is one of those things where it's like, it's this one hurts. Now, you're going to see, we didn't have a second round pick this year because that's part, that was part of the deal that we sent. To, that was the pick that we sent to uh, the Bears, yeah. along with Khalil Mack, uh, when we got the two first back for him. So you're going to see a lot of players after the second first round pick that were available. Um, hopefully, nobody kills themselves. All right, here we go. First round pick number 12, Henry Ruggs was waived in 2021. I believe he's me or will soon to be part of the uh, Henderson County penal system. Uh, he made no Pro Bowlers, no, no Pro Bowls, no All Pro selections. We all know the story. We don't have to be, you know, belabor that point. He's no longer in the NFL. But here's who was available. One pick later, Tristan Wirfs, probably one of the best tackles in the NFL. Uh, all Pro, uh, Pro Bowler as a rookie. Um, a couple picks after that, AJ Terrell, probably the best defensive player that the, the Falcons have at corner. Uh, CD Lamb was available. CD Lamb, has, you know, is rounding out being a, a heavy contributor for uh, the Cowboys. And Austin Jackson, offensive tackle, who is starting offensive tackle, pro bowler, uh, I believe, also for uh, the Cowboys. If you remember that class, there was three wide receivers that everyone was kind of like, all right, it's kind of a three-way tie. Like who is that kind of 1A, 1B, 1C? What are you looking for, right? And Ruggs was in that mix, and he ended up being the very first one drafted because Gruden is addicted to speed. He wanted, he wanted, uh, you know, he wanted his own cheetah type of thing. And I, I, I didn't mind the pick when it was made. I was like, okay, cool. Not angry at it. It could work. This and goes again. And this before goes, he got yeah. really, really stupid, he was starting off the year really well last year, Henry Ruggs. Like, he was on pace. Like, oh, you finally found a stroke. He's, I think he's going to be that star receiver that Gruden thought he could be. And then, obviously, his dumbass crashed. Yeah. Uh, speaking of dumbasses, our next pick, number 19 in the first round, Damon Arnett, another head scratcher. He mm -hmm. was, like, the third best corner on his Ohio State team that year. And, uh Yeah. Not good. Uh, he was waived by us. Uh, got picked up by KC. Was waived. Why by was KC. he? Why was he waived? Juan Soto. Was he just not playing well enough? There was something about a Snapchat story about him waving a gun and threatening to kill somebody. Threatening to kill somebody on video. All right, here we go. That was a head scratcher uh, in every way, shape, and form. And I never crashed and burned exactly how we thought it would. Yeah, exactly. Or not even how, uh, not how we thought it we thought it would. We knew it would crash and burn. Well, thank God he didn't crash. He could have. He should have, but he didn't. Uh, after getting uh, waived by us, he was picked up to a futures contract, which means he's not on the books for the current year, but it's, he's going to be on the books for the following year. Uh, he's not on the team for KC, but he was for the, a future contract for the following season. While on that futures contract, he was pulled over by the same cops twice in Miami, in South Beach, and subsequently waived because he had a bunch of coke on him and ran a guy, I think. Uh, so he's no longer in the NFL. He's a free agent. Here's who was available when Damon Arnett made the when they made the Damon Arnett pick. Okay, uh, we could have gone maybe AJ Terrell the first round and maybe got a wide receiver in the second pick uh, for that first rounder. But let's take a look. Number twenty two, Justin Jefferson. Fuck. Fuck. Well, it was Henry Ruggs, Justin Jefferson, CD Lamb. <laughs> like, okay. Well, there's also the guy from uh, what's his name from um, from Denver. That wide receiver on the Broncos now or from yeah, yeah. University or from no, no. Denver? No, Dem Denver was oh, I forgot his name, but he's like he was the other the other big big wide receiver. Yeah. All right, so it gets worse, guys. Jerry Judy, yeah, it Jerry, was Jerry, Jerry Judy. Judy. Okay. So uh, three picks later, Brandon Ayuk for the 49ers. pretty damn good player up there. Uh, this next one hurts because I really like this guy, Patrick Queen, starting linebacker for the Ravens. Mm -hmm. Damn. They have to get better. The next uh, player that was selected, who was still available at number 33, T. Higgins. Uh, who's going to get motherfucking paid mm -hmm. this offseason? He's probably not going to be with the uh, 
with the Bengals this year because he's going to get paid somewhere else. Next pick after that was a guy near and dear to my heart, the number one receiver for the Colts. Michael Pittman Jr. was available. Uh, seven picks later, the Colts again selected Jonathan Taylor, an all-pro, pro bowler, running back. Uh, and uh, A few picks after that, number 45, Antoine Winfield Jr., pro bowl safety. Uh, a couple picks after that, the 51, Trayvon Diggs, quarterback, uh, all, all pro bowler. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a theme coming here. A um, couple picks after that. Jalen Hurts, quarterback, probably one of the top two MVP candidates this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, after that, Pro Bowler, 70, number 70, Brandon Jones, safety <laughs> for the, Miami. Uh, probably the best defensive player. And after that, another Pro Bowler, Jonah Jackson, guard, that number 75. So a lot, a lot, a lot of talent available. Um, you can't say, whoa, you know, they were these guys were picked in the 40s and 50s. Look, well, we picked fucking Cleveland Farrell on number four, so. You, you can reach for a guy. So there's a lot of players available because we didn't pick again until pick number into the third round, pick number 80. And who was that pick, RJ? Do you remember? I'll never forget it. Raiders All Star, Lynn Bowden Jr. God oh, damn. he's going to be a joker. I'm going to, Gruden's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do some cool stuff with him. Yeah, he could be like a running back, quarterback, wide receiver, hybrid. Didn't make it through training camp. Yeah, he was uh, waived, picked up by Miami. Who he waved him as, traded. Well, he was traded. He was traded for like a sixth round pick. Yeah. Traded to Miami. Miami waved him. He's now with New England. I don't know if he plays. I haven't seen him play. I think he's more of a special teams guy right now. He's still in the league. Uh, next pick, Brian Edwards, wide receiver. High hopes for Brian Edwards. Uh, so we had two back to back picks. We picked Lynn Bowden and Brian Edwards. Mind you, mind you, Mayock before this draft said, "Hey, we have fucking what." Five, six picks in the first 140 picks. It's stealing. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. Uh, Brian Edwards uh, was traded to Atlanta. No pro bowlers, no all pros. Uh, Atlanta waived him. He is now a uh, part of the Kansas City Chiefs roster. Brian Edwards was selected. Who was available? But Julian Blackman, starting safety pro bowler. Uh, Devin Duvernay, wide receiver, kick returner, very important uh, man on the Ravens currently. Uh, we don't have to wait too long for our next pick. Our next pick was another head scratcher. Third rounder. Clemson, from Clemson. Third rounder, mind you. Third rounder project, who was a safety in college, but they want to make him a linebacker, Tanner Muse. Tanner Muse was waived uh, before the season. Didn't make it through training camp. Well, what they did is they, they, I think they saved face. They put him on injured reserve the very first year, never yeah, played, yeah. Never and played. then they waived him. The second year after they waived him, he was picked up by Seattle, put on their practice squad. But he should have been waived. He should have been like they're like, okay, let's put him on IR <laughs> just so we don't look like complete dumbasses. Yeah, not good. Uh, needless to say, no uh, Pro Bowlers or All Pro selections. Who was available when Tanner Muse, the linebacker, was some, another linebacker? Two picks later, <sighs> Alex Highsmith. Starting linebacker for the Patriots uh, was available. And that one stinks because Alex Highsmith is good and Tanner Muse is not. Okay, next pick we had in round four. Again, we're stealing another fourth round pick. John Simpson, a guy from, again from Clemson. Love these Clemson boys, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, John Simpson was waived this year because he played so poorly after being on the bench. And he played so poorly in the little action that he had. We're like, you know what? We're okay, John. Go ahead and he was waived else. after the guy ahead of him was put on I was injured. Think about that for a minute. Think about that. He's the backup to a player. And once the starter gets hurt, you're like, oh, this is my chance to shine. This is when we need this guy the most. <clears throat> and they immediately waived him. Think about that. Yeah. So who was available? Same position. Ben Barch. Ben Barch was a Pro Bowl player. He was drafted as a tackle, but I think he plays a guard currently. Uh Seven picks later. Uh, Gabe Davis, wide receiver. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, all right. This is starting to get depressing. Our last pick, round four, number 139, Amik Robertson. Amik Robertson does not have any Pro Bowls or all pros, but he's our starting corner this year by default, maybe, I think. But whatever. He's starting this year. Who was available, you might ask? Uh, ben Bretson, who made a Pro Bowl at guard. 
Darnell Mooney, who was the number one wide receiver for Chicago, who was probably a two or three anywhere else, but Chicago has a very a lack of talent in their uh, in their skill position, so he's a starting corner uh, wide receiver there. Uh, Michael Onwenwu, guard and tackle. I think we saw him a couple weeks ago. Uh, Jordan Fuller, pretty good safety in this league. Pro Bowl selection, I believe, was available. And Isaiah Rogers. Corner, kick returner, starter. Uh, yeah, that's 20, it for 2020. 2020. That's 2020. First rounder, Henry Ruggs. First rounder, Damon Arnett. Three, Lynn Bowden. Three, Brian Edwards. Three, Tanner Muse. Four, John Simpson. Four, Meek Robertson. This is the worst draft class as far as the <laughs> giant swings and misses that looked terrible when they were drafted and did become that. I'm not even counting Henry Ruggs. Henry Ruggs is like in a different category. Like, that's kind of like to have a DUI and kill somebody, that's kind of like, that's hard to foretell, right? But the Damon Arnett, Lynn Bowden Jr., Tanner Muse picks, all three of those, a first rounder and two third rounders, even at the time, we're like, what are they thinking? Yeah, Why thinking are you using such a high pick on these random dudes? And they all panned out exactly that way. Damon Arnett, just trouble from the beginning. Lynn Bowden, Tanner Muse never played a snap. Brian Edwards, Amig Robertson, starting caliber, even though... Edwards got traded. He's, you know, he's a starter for Atlanta and he was a starter for us for a while. Played decent, right? Mm -hmm. Amik Robertson for a fourth round player. Not bad. Not bad. Fourth Not rounder. Bad. That's a thumbs up, right? So I would say Brian Edwards, Meek Robertson, thumbs up. Damon Arnett, Brian Edwards, Tanner Muse, colossal fuck ups. Henry Ruggs obviously ends up being a super tragedy and clearly a bad pick because he's not playing anymore. But it's it's tough for me to put that on Gruden that bad. When it's, One thing you like, can put on Gruden though is the development, the development of the player and the person. We're seeing a pattern here of players that that are are not being developed, that are not getting better under this regime. I don't feel that you should pick this type of a wide receiver. You should pick a player like this high. Unless he's a lock guaranteed, like this guy is the number one guy in this position. There's there's positions that are more important to your team than a speedy wide receiver, when that's what he's known for for being a speedy wide receiver. Mm -hmm. I understand you needed that, but there was a lot more available. You know, there was what C.D. Lamb, Justin Jefferson, Ayuk, T. Higgins, Pittman. Like there was a lot of quality available that wasn't available in other positions. You know, you have Wirfs, Austin Jackson, you know A.J. Terrell, there Patrick Queen. Like you have a lot more high-end talent at other positions where you have you, you you yeah let's say for example henry rugg stayed in his trajectory but you passed on him and picked up a michael pittman jr you picked up a, a t higgins or something like that the, the, it's it's just smart drafting to not pick a guy up you don't pick the first player at a position unless he's like the top end all be all player at the position it, it, it was a gruden player. i want who i want pick yeah, right. Definitely. I want a speedster, and I'm gonna get him no matter what. What the no matter what what it is. Yeah. All right, we're moving on. No, no final draft 2021. No, yeah, no notable undrafted uh, free agents uh, in 2020. Moving along to 2021. This one's gonna hurt. All right, the second second best draft class, but it didn't start out that way. Yeah. <laughs> um, first round pick number 17, Alex Leatherwood. Didn't like it from the very beginning. All right. Tom Cable Remember, wanted his guy, and he got him. Uh, he and was waived, and he's playing for Chicago. Um, yeah, not doing very well there either. He's a rotational offensive lineman. He starts sometimes. He plays sometimes. Didn't play the whole game. All right, number 21, Quiddy Pay, defensive end. Very damn good player, and he was available. Um, the guy that I wanted at offensive tackle, who is probably one of the best I think PFF earlier this year had was rating him the best offensive tackle or left tackle in the NFL for your and my uh, Minnesota Vikings, Christian Derisaw, same position. Everybody, all the draft pundits, all the picks, everyone's like, okay, if you need to tackle Christian Derisaw, that's the best, that's the best guy available. Right. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we didn't get him. Uh, must have missed that day. Must have missed that day. They, they didn't read that article. Alex Leatherwood is arguably, you can make a case, the biggest bust in Raiders history in the sense that he didn't even make it to season two. 
right? And the part that that killed how, me. How many first rounders don't even make it to a second season? The big, the biggest first round busts get a second season to figure it out. I guess unless it's legal problems, major injury, right? With, with without with those exceptions, you never see a first rounder not even get a second season shot. It never happens. Doesn't doesn't he usually gets at least that second, even a third year. Um, and his refusal to play guard was just like stupefying like dude you suck like what do you want us to tell you and all right next pick we had a trade up member we had a trade up to get trevon merrick who's a starting safety not a bad pick but who else was available asante samuel jr was available probably one of the better corners in the nfl uh jok jeremiah owusu koromora a well, linebacker then. for uh cleveland there i believe right Cleveland, the starting linebacker. Uh, also, Pat Fryermuth was available at tight end. Is a good player as well. We just we saw him a couple days ago. Um, yeah. So Trayvon Merrick, I was a good pick though. I mean, he was the he was the right pick. Thumbs up. Thumbs, Thumbs up, up on that. I mean, Thumbs up. Yeah, yeah, Asante Samuel is a better player, but I mean, Trayvon Merrick is not a bad player as far as you know the, the position and where you picked him. He's uh he's regressed a little this season, but still thumbs up. Still thumbs All right. up. Moving along, round three, we got back-to-back -back picks. Number 79, Malcolm Kuntz, defensive end. He's a backup special teams player. Doesn't really play defense all that much. More of a special teams guy. Again, no Pro Bowls, no All-Pro. Um, kind of a disappointment, I think. I think we, we all wanted a little bit more out of him this year after he kind of was showing some flashes at the end of last year. Fortunately, he's not developing the way we had hoped. Uh, the next pick was number 80, Divine Diablo, who's our starting linebacker. Uh, no Pro Bowls or all pros just yet, but he's, you know, he's ramping up, um, trending Thumbs in the right pick. direction. Thumbs, Thumbs up, up pick. Who was available? Kendrick Green, starting center in this league. Ernest Jones. Uh, that one hurts because he's a pretty damn good Coons linebacker. Coons and Diablo back-to-back? -back? Yeah. Those are back -back, right? yeah. Yeah. That's why there wasn't anyone after Coons uh, or any notable available after Coons because we had the next very next pick. Um, Ernest Jones. Excellent linebacker. Brandon Stevens, uh, Pro Bowl corner. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown, probably the best receiving threat for the Lions, who put up some decent amount of points. Uh, and Ramondre Stevenson at number pick, well, pick number 120 at running back were available when Dion, Divine Diablo was picked. I like Divine Diablo, but the Ernest Jones kind of hurts because Ernest Jones is pretty damn good. All righty, next pick, round four, round? number 143, and that does mean I love you, Tyree Gillespie. Uh, Tyree Gillespie made zero Pro Bowls, zero All-Pros. Uh, he was waived uh, before this season, picked up by Jacksonville, was waived by Jacksonville, and he's currently a free agent, not in the NFL currently. Uh, who was available? This one's going to suck too. Michael Carter II, quarterback, Pro Bowler, sucks. Uh, Derek Forrest Jr., safety. Starting safety in the NFL. And Keith Taylor, all in the secondary. Cornerback in the NFL. That one sucks. Um, this one hurts. This Tyreek Gillespie pick hurts even more, actually, by who was picked, who was available after our following pick, because our following pick was really good. Yeah. Number 60, 167, excuse me, in the fifth round, Nate Hobbs, who was our starting cornerback, one of our best players on our defense. So, A-OK, -okay, double thumbs up on that pick. Great work. Uh, on picking and developing Nate Hobbs. Uh, you want to talk about Nate Hobbs? Well, I feel like uh, like we'll get to like the last pick, number seven. But like we bookended pretty bad with Alex Leatherwood, and we'll get to the seventh pick. But everything in between, solid. Well, not everything. I mean, Terry Gillespie's not in the NFL anymore. Hey, look, you're not. I mean, look, in in five draft picks, you miss one. Like one's a bust. Like that's that's pretty good. That's good. So instead of picking Tyree Gillespie at 143, how about we have picked Nate Hobbs at 143 and picked Talanoa Hofunga, the starting player, the old world safety for the fucking 49ers mm -hmm. out of USC. He was picked number 180 and he was available for us. Could have been us. Uh, also, uh, Diamondor Lenore, um, uh, 
fucking great cornerback in the NFL, uh, was also available at pick 172. All right. So here's the deal, guys. This, this, this is something that I, that I wanted to keep in mind. You've seen a lot of really, really good, talented players available, fourth, fifth, sixth round. And that's what we've been getting for a lot of our draft picks. Like, oh, yeah, you got a fifth round pick? Like, what the fuck is that? Mm, a lot of talent out there. You just kind of got the right guys, right? Okay, round seven. People like to say it's a throwaway pick, but not until you try to figure out who was left over. Number 230, Jimmy Morrissey was uh, picked, waved, picked up by uh, Houston uh, before the end, uh, before the beginning of last season. He played a few games with them. I believe he's still on their roster. Uh, probably one of the worst teams in the NFL history. Uh, but who was available? Nine picks later. Jonathan Cooper, defensive end. Goddamn. Mm -hmm. Jonathan Cooper's pretty damn good. You know who else is pretty damn good? Will Fries, fucking offensive guard. He's pretty damn good, too. And uh, he was available at pick 243. Same position, center guard as Jimmy Morrissey. And that concludes the Gruden, Mayock, draft picks of who was selected, how they did in the NFL, where are they currently, and notable players available when they were selected. So <laughs> what? Let's rank the draft classes. I would say 2019, the best. 2021. Right? After Max that. Crosby, Foster Moreau, Hunter Renfro, Josh Jacobs. Uh, that This one you just mentioned with Merrick, Kuntz, Diablo, Hobbs. Then 18. Um, then 18. 2018 with Colton Miller, Brandon Parker. That's kind of it. And then, and then that just <laughs> that embarrassing, terrible 2020, 2020 finals, with Damon Arnett, Lynn Bowden, three guys that didn't even, well, two guys didn't even make it through training camp. Two third rounders, not undrafted free agents, not seventh rounders, two third rounders that didn't make it through training camp. Both of our first rounders, massive legal troubles to say the least. And only Amik Robertson still in the roster. Amik Robinson took the the path that a fourth rounder takes. You get picked up, you learn your craft, you get better, you play special teams, and eventually you become a starter down the line. That's the that's the fourth, fifth, sixth. That that's what those guys do. Um, you know, you got one, two, three players, not in the NFL mm -hmm. at I all. I drafted, and you got two other guys that don't play that are on I a team. But they don't. I, I, I'm I, sorry, three guys that don't play. I do want to quickly mention um, before we move on to the free agent signings. You think the drafts were bad? What do we get to the free agent signings? Oh God! I do want to mention though, when you start saying players that were behind, like, oh, this guy's a Pro Bowler for the 49ers. This guy's a Pro Bowler for the Bills. They're also going to better teams, and you're going to get generally more out of guys in better programs. So to be able, so you're right. Like, st still bad draft picks. We should have picked these other guys. But we also can't expect it to be apples to apples. Like, oh, this exact player that's playing linebacker for the 49ers or for Tampa Bay, we would have gotten that exact same production. We won it because it'd be a worse defense. Still to your point. But they're better, better players. players. They're better players. But to your point. And, 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 how, and how, yeah, but, uh, they're better players. And would our defense be as bad as it is if we had a quarter of these guys that we passed on? A fifth of the guys that we passed. If we if we were able to pick out of all of these players defensively that we passed on, only when we picked a defensive player, right? Mm -hmm. If we if we were able to pick out of these four years, we were able to pick four. You think we would have a better defense? Hundred percent. Huh, all right. I, I'm just saying. No, I understand. Apples saying. to apples. Set apples but, to apples. But, but when still you have errors, still better. You got seven picks this year in in, in 2020. One of one of the players is on the team who is a borderline starter. I think if we had any type of depth, Amik Robinson wouldn't play as much as he does. I think he's a decent player. He's spurty, but he's not like a lock-in starter for a defense. Mm -hmm. But you got three guys who aren't in the NFL, and you got three guys who don't play. They're in the NFL, but they don't play. Who are so, the top five players out of these four drafts? Max number top one. Five, Max, Colton Miller. Um Jacobs, Hobbs. You think Hobbs over Jacobs? Oh, Jacobs, Hobbs, Jacobs, Jacobs and, Hobbs, uh, Hunter, Hunter, uh, Hunter, Hunter, or or uh, Cole. I think Cole is probably a better punter than Hobbs um, is a receiver, but it's punter. That, 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 yeah, but he's a punter. But I mean, again, you saw what happened when a punter doesn't do a good job against Pittsburgh. It put a lot of pressure on our defense, and ultimately, yeah. 
they were able to get a shorter field and score at the end. But yeah, I mean, um, those that's that's probably the top five. Max for sure. Max Miller, Jacobs, Hobbs, uh, and Hummer. Yeah. All right. So those are the four draft classes of the John Gruden, Mike Merrick era. Now let's move on to the free signings. Oh, now, obviously, oh, free agent signings and trades are there's a million every year, right? So I'm not going to go through every single one of them. I'm just doing the ten biggest signings. And when I say by signings and trades, they're almost all signings, but uh, signings and trades. I would say, and these are just the guys we got. So I'm not counting trading away Khalil Mack, trading away Amari Cooper. Just players that, that John Gruden said, you know what? These guys are going to cost extra. They're floating around in free agency. I'm going to pay top dollar. I'm going to outbid the other 31 NFL teams for the services of this player. Right? So I did top 10 of biggest contracts. Right? So whether you're two-year, three-year, four-year, I didn't count that. It's not per year. Just, mm -hmm. just biggest contracts. You're signed to two years, 14 million. Four years, 60 million. Whatever. Right? The biggest number. Number 10. Jordy Nelson. Two-year deal, $14.2 million signed March 2018. Jesus. He was released from Green Bay after having Aaron Rodgers throw him passes for several seasons. He played one year for the Raiders before he was released. He played one season, 739 yards, 63 receptions, three touchdowns. And that was even with the Amari Cooper trade. You'd think with trading Amari Cooper, he'd have some crazy production. He didn't. No one signed him, and he retired. We were basically his one-year quick payday. Before he went back and started farming in back at his farm in Kansas. Jordy Nelson. That's, that's fucking tough. Because he was shot when we got him. Yep. Uh, number nine, Marcus Mariota. We signed as a backup quarterback. Two years, $17.5 million in March of 2020. Uh, the Titans released him because you remember the Titans that year went nine and seven when they had the number five defense in football. And Mariota was so bad and got injured every single season. They just released the number two overall round pick. Uh, in 2020, he never started. He did play one almost one full game when Carr got hurt against the Chargers and played not bad. Um, and he, I think it was a, a pick at the in the end zone to end the game, right? But he played pretty, pretty good in that game. Um, in 2021, he only attempted two passes. One completion, two passes. Now, in fairness to Gruden, they reworked his deal the second year. So he got one year, three and a half million in 2020 with $8 million in incentives. So they saved, they were able to rework the deal and save a couple bucks. But still, he was the highest paid backup in football. He got hurt every single year as a pro. He even got hurt in his last year in college, right? I think he got hurt in like the final bowl game. He got injured every single year. And what are the only two things you want out of your backup quarterback? Be healthy. Be healthy, be steady. And replicate what the starter can do. He was neither. He was a completely different style quarterback than Derek Carr. And he got hurt every season. He's currently the quarterback in Atlanta. He signed a, this is even crazier. He signed a two-year, $18 million deal. He got a bigger deal from Atlanta after not doing shit with the Raiders than the Raiders gave him after his time with the Titans, which once again proves my theory. You can never evade your draft spot. If you're the number two overall guy, you will get shots forever. He got more. He fleeced Atlanta worse than he fleeced Gruden. It's tough, man. That's tough. I mean, I think what happened was when um, when Gruden signed Mariota at first. I don't know if he was supposed to be a true backup for Carr. He had his package. Of, he had his own little package that he would come in two, three, four. You know all about little packages. Snaps. Oh yeah, two, three, four um, snaps a game. When that didn't really materialize, that's when he was restructured and paid more along the lines of uh, a backup quarterback for us. But yeah, I don't know what the hell fucking Atlanta was Atlanta doing. The round. Was it was it the first year? Sec I think it was the second. I think it was 2022 when he made his very first appearance in like week two or three. And he had like a 40-yard run. It was just like a little like option play. I had like a 40-yard <laughs> run and then got hurt. <laughs> and then got hurt. He like a pulled his hamstring. And he missed played like one weeks. play. He played one play and then was injured and missed like a few games after that. Like that was aye, aye. brutal. Uh, all right, number eight. Those are only those are only the tenth and ninth biggest signings that John Gruden had. Eight. Dear Whitehead, 
Three years, $19 million. He got signed in March of 2018. Uh, one of the first moves that uh, John Gruden made was signed to your way. He played six seasons in Detroit before we got him. He started all 16 games in both seasons as a Raider. 234 tackles, uh, 15 tackles for loss. Well, this is the thing. He was a tackling machine, but he didn't do shit else. He had 941 snaps in his final season with the Raiders. That's the most in NFL history for any linebacker who failed to record a sack, an interception, a fumble recovery, or a first fumble. Literally, no other linebacker in NFL history could play that many snaps and have no stats other than tackles. So again, a good tackler, pretty good tackler by linebacker standards. Could not do anything else. He was released in March of 2020. Uh, he retired as a lion in September. Went back, signed like a one-day deal. Like a one-day deal to, to the retire and, as uh, a lion. and retired. So basically, that's our number ten guy retired after he played after he got paid by us. Our the number eighth biggest deal to your head retired after getting paid by us. Mm, mm, mm. That's tough, man. That's a tough one because again, he is a tackling machine. He. He was terrible in coverage too. He was, I mean, he made yeah. he made a uh yeah, torch Den- in coverage. Denzel Perryman looked good in coverage. Yeah. Uh Denzel Perryman's improving, but man, ter- he was just a, a run stopper, tackler. Uh keep uh, you know, he played the De Gruden defense, the sticks defense. I'll just keep I'll, I'll go to the sticks and I'll keep everything in front of me. If it were the was. 90s, he'd be a Pro Bowl linebacker. If it was if he, if he played in the 90s, he'd be a Pro Bowl linebacker, but not in this era. Not in this era. Uh, still, though, that's probably the best of those of those three so far. Most production by far was that at Tahir Whitehead compared to Jordan Nelson, Marcus Mariota. Uh, moving on to number seven. This is the one that hurts second hardest for me. Oh, Nick Lord. Wachowski mm-hmm. signed three years, $21 million in March of 2020. Uh, he had one really big year in Chicago where he really only started because of injuries, but he played fantastic. Um, 76 tackles, three sacks, and interception. Um in that year, not starting every game, just in his limited play. And this is a gr- another great example of an average player on a really good defense and assuming mm-hmm. that he's going to be that player everywhere. He played 20 games for the Raiders in 2020 and 2021, 102 tackles, only one sack, only one interception. You talk about guys atrocious in coverage. That was Nick. Um, ironically, however, his best full year was 2020 with the Raiders. He did put up his best numbers as a Raider for us. Uh, He's now a backup in Atlanta. Um, He didn't originally make the 53-man roster after injuries. They re-signed him again. He has six total tackles this season as a Falcon. Oof. Yeah. You know, I I was... I was excited about this signing when it happened, though. I was was more excited about him than I was about uh, Littleton when we signed him because I I, I had watched him play, and he was was like a, 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 a Tahir Whitehead, but better in pass protection. He was more of a... Um, you know, he more of not quite as good sideline to sideline, but he was like one of those hard nosed, you know, in your face type of guys, uh, you know, not easy to block type of thing. And just, just couldn't put it together with us. Number six, six biggest free agent signing by John Gruden, Carl Nassib, three years, $25 million. Now defensive ends fetch more. So it's not, uh, proportionally as bad as like Whitehead, Gwit, maybe some others, but still overpaid for the production. Mm-hmm. Signed him in September of 2019. He was a third round pick for the Browns in 2016. He's spent two seasons in Cleveland, then two seasons in Tampa Bay. And in those six seasons, he compiled, compiled 22 sacks. In six seasons, 22 sacks only. And John Gruden said, oh, let's pay him like a superstar Defensive end. In two seasons with the Raiders, he had 49 tackles, one interception, and four sacks. He was released as soon as it made cap sense in March of this year. He's currently with the Bucks. But you get this. He has three and a half sacks, and he only plays about a third of the snaps. So he's a decent rotational player on the Bucks, and that's what he should have been with the Raiders. Signed as a decent rotational guy but he was paid as a borderline Pro Bowl defensive end. Yeah, this one never made sense. It just did, it didn't make sense to uh to sign him for the amount that he at, at the amount that he signed for. 
simply because um, he never showed that he was that person. Now, if you want to talk about a, a high motor guy, Carl Nassib play wise was who Max they, they thought Max Crosby was yeah. just a big, you know, tough, high motor guy. Not really twitchy, not really quick. Nothing, that wasn't him, right? He's going to get his sacks, coverage sacks by, by keep continuing to move, continuing to work. Um, but he just, we paid him, we paid him way, way above what his, um, his production was. And we didn't, we didn't project him out very well. This was a giant head scratcher. Cause I could understand. I, I didn't like the Marcus Mariota pick, but I, at least I get what Gruden was thinking. Oh, I'm going to get this. This guy's completely change our offense. Cause he can do more. All right, whatever. Um, you know, to your whitehead. Oh, he's a tackling machine. We'll get a bunch of tackles. Oh, bad move. But I understand what you're thinking. Carl Nassib was just like. He was. He never ever played anywhere near to this level. The team that drafted him didn't want him after two seasons. A good defense he was on, he barely produced. And you're like, oh, he's going to come to Oakland and then be this insane. This was like this one made no sense, and I did not understand what John Gruden was thinking. It was tough. Number five <laughs> biggest free agent signing by John Gruden. Uh, I would say this is his best one, and I don't think it's particularly close. Uh, Unique Ngakwe signed for two years, twenty six million dollars. Hefty price. Signed in March of 2021. This was his third team in a year. Remember, he played with the Jacks for several seasons. Then he was on the Vikings and Ravens for a hot minute. In 2021, he only had 28 combined tackles, playing almost every snap. But he did have 10 sacks, the second most in his career. This one, this one I feel like makes the most sense because he played exactly how he always played his entire season. I'm just going to get you sacks. That's it. I'm not going to be a run stopper. I'm not going to be a motor guy. I'm going to get you get you double digit sacks every single season, and he did. He he delivered exactly what his resume said he would. He wasn't anything more. He wasn't anything less. Um, after one year, he was traded to the Colts for essentially a rotational player on Indy, Rock Yassine. Rock Yassine. And now Yanni Kingakwe is still on the Colts. He has 27 tackles, nine and a half sacks. Still exactly the same guy. That's who he every is. single season, every single de- defense, every single coach. He's the same guy every single time. And he was what what he was for the Raiders. That's that's who he's been. Um, and that's who he, we he was exactly who we thought he was. And um he was maybe a touch overpaid. Uh, but you were paying for the exact skill that he brought, which was sacks. And remember, that's, the what, season that's why before, you brought him in. And the season before that, the Raiders were dead last in sacks. So it's like, okay, we may, like, okay, we'll pay a little bit above market because we need a sack machine, and that's what he is, and that's what he did. It's, I, I, I'm I, not mad at the signing to this day. I'm not mad at Ngakwe. I'm not mad at Gruden. I thought, okay, that at the time, that's what we needed. That's what we got. I, I would say that's Gruden's best free agent signing was Inik Ngakwe. Number four, I think this is the one you hate the most. Corey Littleton, three years, $35.3 million in March of 2020. Uh, Littleton finished the 2019 season, his last season with the Rams, with a career high, 134 tackles, three and a half sacks, nine passes defended, two interceptions, two forced fumbles, four fumble recoveries, and 16 starts with the Rams, right? Really good numbers for a linebacker. In two seasons with the Raiders, he had 180 tackles, zero interceptions, and one half sack. He lost his starting spot to a rookie towards the end of his second year. He was released in March of this year. Five days later, signed with the Panthers. He's a rotational linebacker with them now. Yeah, that was one that was really tough for me because the first thing I said was, yeah, he was good, but he had probably the best player in the NFL in front of him. And then another guy next to him, Sebastian Joseph Day or Dominic and Sue in front of him, taking up double and triple teams. Each one of them was doing that. So it's another it's really, good player from a great defense. And you're not getting the same guy. You know, you're not getting the same guy because you're not, you're not giving him the same kind of free reign. And he's not lighting the world on fire right now with the Panthers. So he's just, he's rotational just a guy. guy. He's a rotational guy. So, that that system that that uh, that situation was what made Littleton who he was. In March of 2020, in like within a one week time, that's when they signed Gwit and Corey Littleton. 
a combined $56 million. And I thought, finally, our linebacking problems are solved. All right, we're just going to invest in linebacker, big money, Gwit's on the rise, Littleton's after his best game. Awesome. We've got these great linebackers. We're going to do great. Nothing. And, and, and our good linebacker ended up being Denzel Perryman, who we traded a sixth for a seventh for a sixth and just picked him up randomly. Go figure. <sighs> All right, now we're into the top three. Uh, these these two don't hurt as, to me as bad as the other ones, but still bad considering how little they did for the Raiders. Number three, LaMarcus Joyner. Four-year deal. $42 million signed in March of 2019. Long times Ra Raiders player, but he didn't start regularly. Oh, I'm sorry, Rams, long time Rams player. Didn't start regularly until his last two seasons. In 2019, he started 10 games. In 2020, he started six games with the Raiders, zero interceptions, eight passes defended. He was released in March of last year, signed with the Jets, placed on IR immediately in 2021. 2022, actually, this is a bounce back. He's a starter playing 100% of the snaps in every game. He has three interceptions this season. And think about this. The Raiders as a whole have five. He has 60% as many interceptions as the entire Raiders defense. We've seen guys signed to the Raiders where they're just petering out and they get a last payday with the Raiders and retire. We'll see specifically these next two guys that'll have one big year and we'll play them like they're always going to be that guy, but it was kind of fluky. This is the guy that played well before us and well after us. He just did not play well for the Raiders. Now, injuries were a big part of it, but this was the one where it's like, okay, it was literally a black hole in his career when he was in the black hole. That's a tough one, man. The, the, the problem that we're seeing is, again, the development, uh, maybe miscasting a guy, putting him in the wrong position, uh, maybe not a defensive fit. Again, you can't just put any old player in any old system and make them work. You have to put them in a position to succeed, and this is one of the big ones. Number two, biggest free agent signing, the John Gruden era. Terrell Williams, four years, $44 million, March of 2019, one of the uh, one of the first really big signings from Gruden in that when he when he first took over. Uh, he had a really good 2016 with the Chargers. Uh, over 1,000 yards, seven touchdowns, and then it was a steady decline after that, and his steady decline continued with the Raiders. Uh, in 2019, he started 12 games, 42 catches, 651 yards, and six touchdowns with the Raiders. He didn't play in 2020 because he had a torn labrum. He was released in February of 2021. Lions signed him two weeks later. He went on IR after week one, got hurt immediately. He was waived with an injury set settlement and currently a free agent. So this was one of those guys that on a good offense with San Diego, um, he had a one really solid year and then had two years of steady decline. And then that decline continued with us. This was Gruden paying him like he was getting the 2016 Terrell Williams and he got exactly the 2019 version of him because the numbers were trending exactly the direction that he went. He got progressively less and less yards every season to continue with the Raiders. It's plus again, you're, 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 you're paying a two, maybe three who's on the decline to be something that he never was mm -hmm. now because of that whole um, AB thing. Um, he was thrust into being a number one, which, who he never was, but he was always maybe even a borderline two. Again, mm -hmm. this is an e this is, these are ego signings thinking that you can make players players that they're not. You know what I'm saying? If, if you can if you can get a guy who's more than what you paid for, great, but don't pay him as somebody that you're going to develop him into. You show they show you who they are, and you pay them. Hopefully that that they'll um, outplay their, their contract. And the big one, both metaphorically, literally, and financially. Number one, biggest free agent signing by John Gruden. Trent Brown signed a four-year, $66 million deal to be the starting tackle for, at the time, Oakland Raiders. Did that in March of 2019. Now, if you remember, he was drafted by the 49ers. As a rookie, he started every game in 2016. Went on IR in 2017. 
And he was all the rave in San Francisco. Like they're like, oh, this guy's gonna be great. But they still traded him, which should have given you kind of it should have opened everyone's eyes a little bit about the trouble that would follow him to the Raiders. Uh, in April of 2018, he was traded uh, to the Pats, a third for a fifth, plus him. He made the Pro Bowl in 2018. He was absolutely dominant as a New England Patriot on, a, on that deal. Fantastic player for the 2018 patch, Pats. So the Raiders pick him up. Massive deal. And you remember injuries. There was the injection into his lung thing. All these reports of him being lazy. He gained 50 pounds of just pure blubber. He's, yeah. Because like, all those memes of him eating candy on the sidelines and just not giving a shit. So we traded him back to the Browns where he currently plays. Uh, he has a two-year, $13 million contract. So basically, he was a good first. He was a good tackle for the Niners. They got rid of him, likely because they saw how he was trouble and lazy and bad in a locker room. Pat's got an amazing year out of him. The Raiders paid him, and then he's back at the Pats playing well. So we've seen it all, right? We've seen players come to the Raiders on a decline. One last payday, retire. We've seen guys that you knew they were bad. They were bad with the Raiders and stayed bad. There were players who were good before the Raiders, bad with the Raiders, good after. This was Bill Belichick's masterpiece. He paid pennies for him to originally get him, played at a Pro Bowl level, went to the Raiders, played like shit, took all their money, back at the Pats for a reasonable contract, playing these basically as good as he has minus the 2018 season. Yeah, another bad one, man. Another baffling one. Again, this this guy's showing you something that he's been, but you, you're just going to ignore all the red flags, you know? And, you, mm -hmm. and, and again, you're not going to develop him. You're not going to make him better. He gets worse under you, right? He gets heavier. He gets he doesn't work as hard. Like, it's just uh, it's something that we've seen with a lot of these draft picks and a lot of these free agents, same thing. So that's the top 10 biggest free agent signings by John Gruden, Mike Mayock, Jordy Nelson, Marcus Mariota, Tahir Whitehead, Nick Wachowski, Carl Nassib, Unique Ngakwe, Corey Littleton, the Marcus Joyner, Terrell Williams, and Trent Brown. I would say every single one of them a failure minus Unique Ngakwe. I would like almost every single one of these guys didn't play out their con, finish out their con. Not a single one of these guys finished out their contract with the Raiders, uh, except for Mariota, but it was reworked. Right, mm -hmm. So he's the only one that actually played the two years, even though it wasn't the original deal. Um, every one of them, they played absolutely atrocious with us, with the exception of Nini Ngakwe, who played how he always did. And this is what gets me the most, Soto. And we'll end with this, because I'm curious what you think. It's not like John Gruden was duped the same way over and over and over again. It's not like he's like, oh, this guy had one good season. You know, we, we had guys with one good season, and Gruden thought he'd always be that guy, and they weren't. We had guys that were steadily declining and Gruden thought he can turn things around and they couldn't. He had guys that had nowhere near as good as their production and didn't do that either with the Raiders. So it wasn't like Gruden was duped the same way every time. He was duped in different ways with every one of these signings. There's, there, it wasn't like he fell in love with one thing and kept getting fooled. It's like he got fooled in every possible scenario with all 10 of these big signings. That's what happens when you lead with your ego. Um, being a head coach is a lot more than being able to drop plays. And being a head coach is a lot more than getting people to like you. Right? He's a player's coach. Coach, the, you know, players like playing for him, right? But you need to be able to identify talent and you need to be able to develop talent. And those are two things that he just wasn't able to do. And um, that's why he's a firework. That's why he's a firecracker. He can catch lightning in the bottle for a year or maybe two, right? Where the players really come together and like just guys play off their ass. But if you don't develop them, if you don't make that consistent, you don't make that better play a consistent thing. They don't consistently get better and they just get, they play really well and they, they just crash back down to earth. You're not going to have those consistent winning seasons. You're going to have those seasons where, you get better players around you, but you know, because you pay a bunch of guys, but 
those players aren't going to get better. You draft young guys who want to want to win and want to play good, play good because you want to be in the NFL, but you don't really do what it takes to develop them. And you sit there and you just, you know, draw plays left and right and crack jokes and get guys to like you. And that's pretty much who, who Gruden was. And the lack of talent scouting and the lack of development really shows in all aspects of what he did in the draft and in, in free agency. So that was all 32 draft picks by John Gruden and the top 10 biggest signings in the second Gruden. Oh, era. Mayock, too. Let's not, let's not. Gruden Mayock. Gruden Mayock. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it for us. We hope you enjoyed it as best as you possibly could. If you're, a Raider right. fan. If you're like a Charger Chiefs fan, you're probably just sitting here beating off aggressively and happily yeah. watching all these mistakes that were made. <laughs> and we'll see what this, uh, this new era can do. With uh, the McDan- the McZiegler era with Josh McDaniels and Dave Ziegler. One draft in so far, too, too early to tell. Free agency, hot and cold, couple good, couple bad. Um, we'll see what happens moving forward. But until then, knock on wood if you're with me. Congratulations for making it all the way to the end of our video. If you want Darren Waller to catch 20 touchdown passes next season and for Max Crosby to have 30 sacks, Go ahead and subscribe and click the next video.